Did you know that animals see the world differently from us? Take this. Pigeons actually have better vision than humans. Crazy, right? So let's try to see the world from the animal's eyes. Let's start with snakes. Their way of seeing the world is totally different from ours. They have special infrared sensitive receptors in their snouts. This allows them to see the radiated heat of warm blooded mammals. Now let's move on to cows. These big guys don't see colors as well as humans do. They can't see the color red because they don't have the necessary receptors in their retinas for that. So they only perceive variations of blue and green. Also, they don't like it when someone approaches them from behind. They have a near panoramic vision and the only area they can't see is directly to the back. So if you're ever sneaking up on a cow, make sure you give them a heads up. Horses have a blind spot right in front of their faces because of their eye placement. This means they can't see things directly in front of them. Also, they don't see as many colors as we do. Just like cows, their world is mostly made up of greens, yellows, and blues. Poor guys. Fish eyes have ultraviolet receptors and a more spherical lens than humans. This gives them an almost 360 degree vision. As for colors, they're able to see all the same ones as we humans do. But because light behaves differently underwater, they have a hard time discerning red and its shades. Deep sea fish can easily see in the dark, which is pretty cool. Sharks, on the other hand, can't distinguish colors at all, but they see much clearer under the water than we do. Birds have some pretty unique ways of seeing the world. Unlike humans, birds can see ultraviolet light. This helps them differentiate between males and females of their own species, as well as better navigate in their surroundings. Also, they are very good at focusing. For example, falcons and eagles can focus on a small mouse in the field up to a distance of one mile. A pigeon can see all the tiny details. So if you ever need to find a crack in the pavement, just ask a pigeon. And by the way, it has a 340 degree field of vision, and generally their vision is considered twice as good as a human's. There, you have it. I'm envious of a pigeon. Insects have some weird vision patterns too. Flies, for example, have thousands of little eye receptors that work together to give them a big picture of what's going on around them. And get this, they see everything in slow-mo. Plus, they can see ultraviolet light. It helps them with communication. Bees have their own problems. These guys can't tell what the color red is. To them, it looks like a dark blue. How messed up is that? Now, rats. These little guys can't see red either, but that's not the weirdest part. Either of their eyes moves on its own, so they're seeing double, like all the time. It's a wonder they don't run into more walls, am I right? Cats don't see shades of red or green, but they do see brown, yellow, and blue hues like a boss. Plus, they got a wide-angle view, so they can peep more stuff on the sides than we can. There's more, though. When it's pitch black outside, cats become ninja-like and can see six times better than us. Their pupils adjust to any lighting like magic. Now let's talk about dogs. These furry friends can't see red or orange, but they do rock at blue and violet. Plus, they can differentiate 40 shades of gray. I mean, it's not 50, but still impressive. On a related note, frogs are really picky eaters. They won't even bother with food that isn't moving. They could be surrounded by a buffet of delicious bugs, but if they don't wiggle, frogs won't even bat an eye, and they're not the most observant creatures either. If something isn't important to them, like a shadow, they won't even bother looking at it. Chameleons have eyes that can move independently of each other, so they can see everything around them without even turning their heads. They can even see two images at the same time, like a double feature movie, one in front and one behind. Pretty impressive, right? What would you do if you suddenly got 360 degree vision like a chameleon? Share in the comments. This is Finch, and he's a Tarsier. I know, he looks like someone's just pointed their headlights at him in the middle of the night. But the size of his eyes was an evolutionary adaptation that allowed him to see better in the dark. His eyeballs are as big as his brain. Tarsiers have the biggest eye-to-head size ratio out of all mammals. Now, it's a known fact that humans and animals don't see the world in the same way. But how about we dive into how some creatures experience our reality? To start out with Finch, well, he rocks at night vision. While humans experience the nighttime in a scale of gray colors, Tarsiers can only see monochromatically. 
but the orbs in their eyes allow them to gather every single bit of light available in an environment. This means that they can hunt insects and tiny birds with a bizarre precision, even if it's pitch black outside. They can't move their eyeballs, though. So if they see something to their left or right, they have to turn their entire heads. FYI, there's actually a night vision goggle named Tarsier that allows humans to experience darkness much like these animals do. In case you're wondering, this is what a forest would look like to a Tarsier. And speaking of seeing in the dark, these pals are called Arctic Reindeer. They developed an interesting feat that helps them see in dim light. The back of their eyes changes color according to the season. In the summertime, the back of their eyes is gold and in wintertime, it's blue. You see, winter light is at least 100,000 times fainter than summer light. This adaptation helps reindeer find food and protect themselves from predators during the three months of harsh winter. You can also find this type of adaptation in other nocturnal animals, such as our beloved cats. Picture it like a mirror sitting behind the retina. This is the basic structure of an eye. On the outermost layer, you'll see the pupil and the iris. This is where light first enters the eye. Then the muscles behind the iris squeeze and stretch the lens to direct the light onto the back of the eye. This innermost part, aka the back of the eye, is what we call the retina. Over there, we can find photoreceptors called rods, which capture dimmer lighting, and other ones called cones, which perceive bright light. For animals that have to see well in the dark as a matter of survival, the photoreceptors absorb every bit of photon available in an environment. By the way, photons are another name for tiny units of light. If you've ever flashed some light into a cat's eye in the middle of the night, you've probably seen this mirror-like adaptation in action. It bounces back all the light it receives to the photoreceptor, giving it a second chance to absorb everything it possibly can. It's what makes feline or owl eyes look so yellow in the dark and may give the feeling that you're inside a horror movie. Now, if we enrolled all animal species of the world in a competition to see who had the best eyesight, which species do you think would win? Well, this result is not as straightforward as it may look. It depends on which category we're talking about. If we're thinking about the animal with the sharpest vision, we have to talk about birds of prey. More specifically, the likes of a peregrine falcon. These falcons have a type of binocular vision eight times as sharp as humans do. This means that while they're flying at impressively fast speeds, they can spot with immense precision a rabbit over a mile away. This is possible because birds of prey have around 1 million cones in their fovea, on the back of their eyes. For comparison, humans have only around 30,000 cones. But if we're talking about which animal can perceive the widest range of color, then things get a bit more complicated. Remember when we talked about cones and rods? They are the ones responsible for perceiving light and sending the signals to our brains that allow us to form images. But our cones and rods only capture certain wavelengths of light. To put it simply, the amount of colors a species can see depends on which types of photoreceptors it has. Our dog buddies have only two types of receptors. This means that they mainly see the colors from the blue and yellow spectrum. If you wear anything from the red color spectrum while you're walking your dog, they will probably perceive it as a gray or something like that. Amazingly, this blue bottle butterfly has at least 15 types of photoreceptors. Seven of them are wired to different tonalities of blues and greens, which means that they can see colors humans can only ever dream of seeing. Researchers believe that since these butterflies live in dense, lush green forests, this adaptation might help them track other of their species during high-speed chases. 
If we change environments and take a look at aquatic animals, mantis shrimps probably have a pretty psychedelic vision. These funny-looking creatures have a whopping 16 varieties of photoreceptors, with five of them reserved for the ultraviolet, or UV, spectrum. Ultraviolet rays are really short wavelengths, which are invisible to humans. The thing science still doesn't understand is how exactly these mantis shrimps view the world around them. Sure, they can perceive a bunch of colors, but they can't necessarily distinguish all of these colors amongst themselves. This happens because image processing is done in the brain. After the light hits the retina, the retina sends information down our nervous system and a colored image starts being formed in our brains. One might wonder though, what goes on inside these mantis shrimps' brains, huh? And what about motion? The winners in this category are insects. You've probably seen a movie scene where an insect's eyesight looks like a kaleidoscope of thousands of tiny TV screens. But that's not really true. These multiple lenses serve as photoreceptors to capture all available light. You see, to have the fastest motion vision, photoreceptors need to quickly sense changes in light. So let's take a fly as an example. Although they're short-sighted, their eyes give them an almost 360-degree view of their surroundings. That would be a pretty neat superhuman power to have, huh? Their brain processes motion information pretty quickly, 10 times faster than humans do, which is why it's so hard to catch them. Some species have terrible eyesight and have to depend on other mechanisms to see the world around them. For example, Dolphins use their ears to see under the water. I know that sounds weird, but they use something called echolocation. Dolphins emit extremely high-frequency sound waves that are classified as ultrasound, which humans can't hear. While they're swimming, they emit a type of clicking sound to scan the water for food and other animals. Whichever way sound bounces back to them will help them identify what's in the water ahead and move around them. That's also what bats do to help them move around the really dark environments they usually live in. Snakes have pretty bad eyesight. It's believed that some can't see color at all. Snakes that spend most of their time under the ground have small, simple eyes that can only tell the difference between light and dark. Snakes that live above ground have better eyesight. They can see ultraviolet light, which helps them hunt in broad daylight. Now, the most interesting ones are snakes such as pythons and vipers. They have a special something called pit organs on their heads. Pit organs are an important adaptation that allows snakes to see heat sources. Actually, they can detect infrared radiation from a body source, which helps them to detect their prey. If I were a rodent living in the forest, I'd be pretty scared of these guys. It's just a regular day. As usual, you're taking a shower before starting to get ready for work. Everything is going as planned. Until it isn't. One clumsy move, some water spilled on the floor, and you're flapping your arms in the air, your body nearing the floor with frightening speed. Everything goes black first thing you hear is a high-pitched whining in your head. Ouch, your head. Ugh. You carefully get up. There's no blood, and that's good. An even better thing is that the annoying noise stops abruptly. Holding your head, you leave the bathroom and almost stumble over your cat, Milo. He hisses, and then a clear voice in your head says, Clumsy loser. Huh? You whip your head around in fear, but you see no one. It's just you and Milo. You've probably hit your head more than you thought. You shrug and make your way to the kitchen. Milo follows you. You hear ceaseless grumbling. Why can he sleep in the bedroom and I'm banned from there? Why haven't I gotten my meal yet? This leather creature's too lazy. Shall I scratch the sofa or leave a mouse on his pillow? The first thought that comes to your mind is, we have mice in the house? The second is more relevant. I'm losing my marbles. Great. Acting on autopilot, 
you pour some milk into Milo's bowl and fill another one up with some dry food. The cat doesn't seem to be satisfied with how fast you are. If his, oh for goodness sake, move it, man, is anything to go by. Okay, now you'll have to live with the knowledge that your beloved cat Milo actually has the personality of a grumpy old man. Duh. You decide to lock yourself in the bathroom again because you're starting to get overwhelmed. You sit down heavily on the toilet lid and almost jump a foot in the air when you hear someone arguing loudly. After looking around, you find out that, apparently, there are not only mice, but also cockroaches in your house. Just great. At the moment, you're staring at a couple of these insects, which seem to be having a fight. At least, one of them is accusing the other of... Wait, what? Cheating? You've heard enough. You're about to dash out of the bathroom when you hear a bang. In the living room, you find your cat on the floor under a smashed flower pot. The worst thing? He seems to be really hurt. He won't stop whimpering and meowing. Ugh, it hurts! It hurts! My paw! Ouch! Ouch! But the sofa can't remain unscratched today. You grab Milo, shove him into the carrier. Hey, watch out, you leather bag! And head for the clinic. On the way, you have to concentrate hard to block out the noise of countless voices assaulting you. The waiting area at the vet is full. Uh-oh, you're in for a long wait. Half an hour later, your head is ready to explode. You found out that that yellow python is suspiciously interested in the hamster a girl in the corner is clutching to her chest. So fat, so pretty. The hamster's worried about his stash of nuts. Where did I hide them? Where, where, where? A tiny dog that has come with an elderly lady is anxious about needles. Ah, if that shop thingy comes near me once again, they'll regret it. I'll destroy everyone on my way. Finally, it's your turn. The vet invites you to her office, and you bend to pick up Milo when a desperate-looking young man bursts into the room. My puppy! What's wrong with him? The vet looks at you apologetically, but you're focused on the puppy. It looks weak, but you manage to figure out the words, Chocolate! Yum! When you tell the vet and the anxious owner that the pooch has eaten some chocolate, which is basically poison for dogs, they give you a funny look and disappear into the doctor's office. Sometime later, the guy exits, holding the dog that looks way better than before. When they leave, the vet turns to you. How did you figure out the dog had eaten chocolate? Uh-oh, here it comes. You decide that honesty is the best strategy and tell the vet that you can understand what animals say. Of course she doesn't believe you. You have to try hard to persuade her. But with the help of two other dogs, Milo and an elderly squirrel, you manage to make her believe you. When you get back home, your head is spinning and you're pretty hungry. All you can think about is some fried eggs and bacon. Yum. W wait, bacon? But it's, uh-oh. Apparently, starting today, you're a vegan. Anyway, that's when it starts. You don't know how it happens, but you become famous overnight. The next morning, a loud noise wakes you up, and it doesn't sound like animals talking to you. You look out of the window and see crowds of people gathered around your house. Some of them are reporters, but others are pet owners that have come to ask you for help. Milo is not happy. While grumbling nonstop and calling you names, he bites your leg and retreats under the stairs. And you go out of your house to talk to people and answer the reporter's questions. In the evening, you're exhausted, but also happy. You've saved several animals today. They had serious health and psychological problems their owners couldn't figure out on their own. Lying in bed in the dark, you think of how you can use your ability. That's when your plan takes shape. Soon, you become the most renowned animal care specialist in the world. You listen to animals talking about their problems, talk them out of depression, and help them resolve misunderstandings with their owners. TV shows invite you for interviews. 
Your YouTube channel is growing every day. People recognize you on the street and ask you to take pictures with them. You travel the world, help endangered species, and give lectures. You open vet clinics all over the globe and invite the best professionals to work there. You never feel lonely. There's always someone to talk to or listen to. At least, some birds when you're walking in the park, or some fish when you're having a rare moment of rest on the beach. At the same time, you've come to realize how many animals are begging for help, but no one can hear them. You decide to take up the role of their speaker. It turns out you're now famous not only in the human world, but also in the world of animals. They're grateful, and in return, they start informing you of different natural disasters that are about to happen on the planet. You've heard that animals can predict earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. And if before, people had to try hard to notice some unusual behavior of certain species, now animals just pass you information about what's going to happen and where. With time, you notice that you spend less time among people and more time with animals. Together, you plan campaigns against zoos, circuses, and other places where animals are kept against their will. And then, one day, the unthinkable happens. You're returning home when a black van stops next to you. A few big masked guys grab you and push you inside. The doors close behind your back. Inside, you find out that several influential people aren't happy with your activity you realize that this trip isn't going to end well. The guys blindfold you and lead you somewhere, but at one moment, you lose your footing and hit your head on something hard. You open your eyes. Milo is standing over you, looking at your lying body rather indifferently. And then the most terrible thing happens. He meows what sounds like a whole sentence, turns away, and walks out of the bathroom. And you don't understand the meow of what he's saying. Was it all just a dream?